I got some questions here. The um, magic carpet questions. When um, holy you know, smokes, we get the carpet questions. We got the carpet questions we because got out on the carpet. <laughs> The my magic carpet video evidently it 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 you know it, it gets a few it gets a few views every day, but all of a sudden in the last three weeks it's getting like two three hundred views a day and it's like holy yeah, smokes. it must have came up with cures and now his feet again. I uh, yeah Very, some that's usually how it happens or the algorithm just kind of you mm -hmm. know sometimes they, they they turn it or somebody posts something and then it goes viral again so there was a little resurgence and that means I get the same questions over again that I've, I've talked about, I don't know how many times before in the last year, but, um, so I thought we'd just run through a few of these quick and, um, then I can, I post a little excerpt video on them, but, um, so, um, now we've used, you know, when I talk about the magic carpet, there's two different variations. You got the window screen, which is the 36 by 84 inch piece of aluminum. Now, bright aluminum mesh screen, and you got the Faraday cloth, which is approximately 42 by 108 inches of um, fabric that's impregnated with um, nickel and copper wires. So, impregnated, yeah. impregnated. impregnated. Yeah. <laughs> And um, K7ULM asks, um, my, uh, based on your extensive experience, how would you compare the effectiveness of the door screen versus Faraday fabric? And um, I find that the two are functionally equivalent. They are going to give you practically the same performance. The only difference is that um, the Faraday fabric is a little bigger, so it's got more square feet. And I found on the lower bands, the more surface area you can cover, the better match you're going to get. So, especially on 40 meters. So you might find a slightly better match on 40 meters with a single piece of fabric than you might from a single piece of door screen. And the reason being is because the fabric is covering more surface area. If we were to cover, if, if all things are equal and both were the same size, they would both have the same exact performance. Right. You you could also just go get two pieces of window screen too, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and kind of sort of you know you know kind of line them, them up. Yeah, join them it, together. It really, it's it's and it, the, so okay. Go out and buy a Faraday cloth. Yeah, they may you know roll out a little bit easier. It mm -hmm. may you know may look a little bit nice, but you're really paying for a name. It's just window screen cloth. You can yeah. go to the hardware store, like find your local neighborhood hardware store, and they got big rolls of it. You just ask them for a six foot piece. There you go. You. you don't have to get the prepackaged one, right? Yep. And it's yep. the same thing. It doesn't have to be impregnated with nickel because that ain't going to make a difference. No, right? no. You'd have to get something ginormous, like a quarter wavelength in each direction for it to really start to play play an effect. And it's silly. It's silly. Just go out and buy some cheap window cloth in bulk, and you're good to go. You're good to go. Yep. The um, the the only advantage to the fabric is that it folds up nice and compact. So if you're backpacking, mm -hmm. yeah, then that's that's an advantage. But otherwise, I like to you know people people will ask me, you know, um, why you wouldn't you know what you know why you why do i use one or the other and, and a lot of times it's it depends on what i'm laying it down on you know if it's if it's um the parking lot is full of snow and, and garbage and mud i'll put the, i'll put the window screen down because it's easier to clean i don't have to worry about getting the fabric dirty mm -hmm. um you know, in that, in that regards, but, um, you know, um, which kind of brings us to another question. Um, could either the screen or the Faraday cloth be used on the top of snow? Will it still work? Yes, it will. Um, I've floated both of them on top of snow and, um, they work just fine. Yeah. So I only worry about putting on, like if you got a big snow pack is stability of the actual tripod yeah. or the antenna itself. Right. That's mm -hmm. the only key thing. Well, yeah, you can pop it right up on the snow. It's not going to make yeah. a difference. Uh, unless you've got like four feet of snow and you're up in the UP, then, then you might see a little bit of difference, I would think. Yep. Yep. Um, but mm. yeah, we'll just go with that. If it's a nice, if it's a real sunny day, 
you'll get a little bit of thermal heating and the snow will melt underneath the, the, the fabric or the screen. So yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll get a little icy and wet, but you can just you can kind of shake it out. So um, a couple of people asked about the size. Um, can you address the cloth and screen effect on pattern, SWR and pattern or what, you know, or if they're in, independent? Um, you know, on an anecdotal level, I haven't really noticed a, 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 a difference between using, you know, laying out the screens and laying out radials. They seem to work, fun, you know, the uh, very similar on a performance level. I think that in order to really affect directivity, though, with um, the screen or the Faraday cloth is, you know, like you said earlier, Joe, you got to have lengths of, of about a quarter wavelength in length. Right. So, and then you can start to lay those out, uh, radiating from your antenna, and um, and create some directivity. But you know, one piece of screen um, laying underneath or alongside or perpendicular. You know, if it's only if it's only going out six feet, it's not gonna. It's it's you're you're not gonna you're not gonna cause any directivity. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, there is there is a whole art to actually uh, with the directivity with ground planes. Yeah, um, they, they do it. They can use that with like commercial AM stations, especially with yeah. phasing and multiple antennas and the ground planes. And then oh, there yeah. is an art to that. Uh, for what we're doing, it doesn't matter which way you put it. You know, if it's <laughs> if it's three by five or four by eight, or and if it's pointed, you know, to Aries and the South, and when they're in perfect alignment, it doesn't matter. No, really. no, you exactly. Have to get it like at least a quarter wavelength yep. long, and even then, it's going to be marginally directive. Yeah, directive. yeah. So exactly. Yeah. So a good example. I was thinking about this: the buddy stick. Okay, if you've used a buddy stick antenna, it's got one counterpoise. Yep. And that counterpoise is a little bit directional. So if you want to set up your buddy stick and point it to the south, they say that it'll help transmit towards the south. Now, mm -hmm. I never really got that too much. I mean, it, it does help a little, I, I'm sure, but it's not that much. But when you have a ground plane, you kind of got your surface area even right yeah so it, exactly it doesn't, it doesn't make much of a difference yeah. um it's like the same thing if you put like a mag mount two meter antenna on a for, on a um cookie sheet mm -hmm. right you can turn that cookie sheet any which way even though the cookie sheet itself is actually probably you know 21 inches or 19 inches it's definitely close to a quarter wavelength um it's not really going to make that big of a difference no no it doesn't yeah yeah and then finally, somebody asks, um, is there a reason why it's not square? You know, you know, because, you know, the concept con um, conventional wisdom is, you know, want your radials to go out all directions, you know, like in a big circle, but you're using a rectangular piece of mesh or screen or something. You know uh, why it's not square? Because it yeah. comes prepackaged rectangular. That's why. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <That's> why. <laughs> and and if not... it was square, it wouldn't make a difference. No, because it's not it's not the size of the of the of the screen. It's the surface area that it covers. That's the important part. It's surface area, not size. Um, as you increase um, lots of little radials, um, you know, if you're using lots of little radials in your that are ground mounted on a vertical antenna, you get um, you'll you'll receive. Um, greater, um, you know, uh, uh, or, or less, you know, a, a less loss is a greater um, effective um, DBI in the, in the takeoff of your, of your radiated s signal. And that's the same thing with the screen. It's the more surface area you can cover, the better, um, you know, the, the better match, the, the, the less, of, the less of the ground losses you're going to, you're going to receive. So. You've been reading that antenna book, haven't you? You know, actually, so I was reading about counterpoises. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> and now, of course, I can't find it, but <laughs> you know, got that chapter and verse memorized. <laughs> I, I bookmarked it, but um, the bookmark fell out. 
No, it's it's right here. I'm on the page. I just can't remember what paragraph. I should have put a sticky note on the paragraph, um, because it the act the actual word that he used. Um, uh, let's see. More it it had to do with um, lots of um, sh lots of counterpoises. It created sort of a thickening of the of the signal, which was a, was an interesting, interesting term. Um, a thickening. A thickening. And now Size I can't... doesn't matter, but thickening does. Yes. Yes. Um, so it's, so it says in here, so it is, you know, the, is, Hamble's antenna book. So, yeah. uh, Chuck As asks, it is written, so may it be done. Yeah. Chuck <laughs> asks, what book do we have there? Roth Hamill's <laughs> antenna book. Roth, okay. Roth Hamill. Roth yeah. Hamill. Yeah. So this, so to give you an example if you've had the ARRL <laughs> antenna book. That's like yeah. the cliff notes of this. Yeah. Okay. This came down off the mountain, written in stone <laughs> tablets in the original German. In the original German, off Deutsch. Off Deutsch. Deutsch. Into <laughs> Deutsch. Uh, this is translated to English, of course, but it's yes. um, this is the uh end all be all pretty much if you want the but it's also going to cost you an arm and a leg and it's not it's, like bathroom reading either no it's 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 condensed it's got a it's got a lot of information in it but the information is sparse but it has references to take you back to the original source so you can go and read you know from there um the in in greater detail so it gives you a starting point for about for for just about anything but right. um no it's crazy I, I think i paid about i paid about 80 bucks for it it's it's a I had to, for a book yeah i had to get it from germany it took about three yeah. weeks to get so is there a youtube video on that <laughs> well, there might be <laughs> there might be soon KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.